Hi! Welcome to Infrared Learning, your quickest way to learn thermography. For this video, we will show you the basic operational tutorial of LEAR EXX series thermal cameras. It is recommended to register your thermal camera as soon as possible. Registration will extend the warranty of the thermal imager and allows you to submit a service request online. It will also give the unlock code of the camera. Register your camera at FLIR Support Center. To access the page, go to support.flir.com. You may click Log In or Sign In if you already have an existing account or click the Sign Up to create a new one. Select the product registration, then type the serial number, which can be found on the calibration certificate or on the battery compartment located at the bottom of the camera, then click Validate. The Support Center is where you can also download the FLIR Tools software, such as FLIR Tools and FLIR Tools Plus, which is used for analyzing images, videos, and creating an inspection report. The FLIR EXX series have interchangeable lenses. The AutoCal lens feature allows the user to change the lens without sending the camera for recalibration. Note, this is only available for E75, E85, and E95. With large 4-inch scratch-resistant touchscreen LCD display. Charge the battery for 3-4 to four hours or overnight before the first use. The light on the battery will blink while they're charging and turn solid once fully charged and ready for use. Insert your SD card. The slot for the SD card is located under this rubber cover at the top of the camera. You can also see a USB-C port that is used for powering the camera, connecting the camera to the PC for downloading images, and streaming video to our PC software such as FLIR Tools and FLIR Tools Plus. Once the battery is charged, install one, remove the lens cap, and power up the camera. Once you power on the thermal camera, you will see the FLIR logo on the display. The camera is now calibrating or performing the NUC. It is important to let the camera do the NUC process and do not press anything. This process will not take time. The camera's touchscreen-driven LCD makes it easy to navigate the menu system and adjust the various settings. If you are wearing a gloves, you may use the navigation pad. Pressing the center of the navigation pad will bring up the main menu, which you can navigate with the pad pressing left and right. At the upper left side of the navigation pad is the play button or archive button for viewing your saved thermal and visual images and videos. Beneath the archive button is the P button or the programmable button which is used for easy access of your color palettes and settings. To the right of the navigation pad is the back button that can be used to go out of a selection in main menu or go back to live image. Underneath the back button is the power on or off button. At the bottom of the navigation pad is the laser button. Having a correct date and time entered on your camera is important for proper documentation and record keeping. These values will be embedded on each image or video you will be saving. To set the language, date, and time, navigate the settings menu by tapping the bottom of the screen or push the center button. Go to Settings, Device Setting, then select the language, time, and units. Adjust the temperature units into Celsius or Fahrenheit and the distance unit into meter or feet. You can also zoom in or out your screen by spreading out your fingers. Slide the screen down for easy access of the Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, screen rotation, lamp, 
brightness, and battery percentage information, as well as your SD card storage information. The lamps will come in handy in getting better images of an area or object being inspected in dark places. Press the laser button at the bottom of the navigation pad to switch on or off. The laser will guide the user on their point of interest without getting closer to the subject. The range covers an interval of temperatures that the detector is able to measure accurately without going into saturation. Choose a suitable range for your target and environment and then work within that range to get the best thermal contrast. To set the range, navigate the settings menu, then select camera temperature range. Pick the most appropriate range for your application and press the center button. There are two ways to adjust the focus. Manually adjust the focus of the camera by turning the lens barrel until you obtain the proper focus. Press the up trigger button in front of the camera to activate the autofocus. For the autofocus to work properly, the target should be a distinct difference between warm and cool areas in the frame. There are four different view modes with this series of thermal cameras. To navigate the image mode, tap the center button on the navigation pad to bring up the main menu. Then select the image mode icon. You'll have the thermal MSX or multi-spectral dynamic imaging that superimposes the visual image under the thermal image. For example, a circuit breaker has many numbers and it can be seen in the normal thermal image mode only. But by MSX, you can clearly see even the small numbers in the circuit breaker. This feature overlays the digital with the infrared image. In the following thermograms, you can actually get the breaker numbers or nameplate information of the motor which are very helpful in troubleshooting and analysis. Next is the thermal only. Thermal only is pure thermal image. It will store both infrared and digital image at the same time. Picture in picture focus carefully on the best visual to thermal picture alignment. It is helpful to highlight the anomaly in your subject while providing visual information at the same time. And last is the digital camera, which displays just the visible image. For those of you who are new, we recommend to use the thermal-only mode first as this will help you better understand what's required for proper focus. You can also change the image mode later in FLIR Tools or FLIR Tools Plus. Tune your thermal images by adjusting the level or brightness and span or contrast. This allows you to highlight important areas or get better visualization of the target object or area. By default, the camera is set to automatic adjustment mode. This will automatically set the scale based on the hottest and coldest object in the frame. To manually adjust the scale, go to the main menu and select the temperature scale icon located in the main screen. Pressing the center push button will display your two choices, the auto and manual. Selecting manual mode, toggle the navigation pad up and down to manually adjust the scale or use the slider located in the side of the screen. You can also tap the screen where you can change the scale based on the temperature values in whatever region you touch on the thermal image. If you have a specific range, you may input the maximum and minimum temperature accordingly. Tap the bottom of the LCD screen to bring up the main menu and navigate or tap the color palette icon. You'll have different options such as the following. Iron palette is the mostly used due to the good balance of thermal sensitivity and spatial resolution. Rainbow palette is helpful when significantly considering the differences among certain temperatures. This thermal imager offers several kinds of temperature measurement tools such as no measurement, center spot meter to note the temperature of a certain spot, hot spot box which provides the maximum temperature inside the display box, cold spot temperature box with the minimum temperature value in an area, and two user preset options. 
set your region of interest by touching the center of the box and moving it around the screen. You can also adjust the size of the box while dragging the corners outward. You can move the spot around the image by simply dragging it with your finger. Same with the hotspot box and cold spot temperature box. You can also set an alarm inside the box. Add a spot, box, delta, or a circle. Isotherms highlight the areas of the image that meet the temperature criteria the user has set. You also need to adjust the temperature measurement parameters such as the following, the emissivity, reflected temperature, relative humidity, atmospheric temperature, object distance, and external IR window compensation. If we are looking for an IR optic through a piece of switch gear or MCCs, you can turn on or off and set the optic temperature, also the transmission rate. These parameters affect the temperature readings, especially emissivity and reflected temperature. Therefore, it is important to set them correctly. With our various special courses, you will know what is the importance of each parameter and how to set them correctly. Be sure to check them out. Press the main trigger located at the bottom of the autofocus trigger button in front of the camera to capture an image. Try to remain still while doing so. Any abrupt or excessive movement may blur the digital and thermal image photos as they are captured at the same time when pressing the button. To delete the image, navigate the archive then select the image you want to delete. Press the trash icon then select OK. For documenting your work, you can change the settings of your visual thermal sync. You can add other measurement tools, add note and text comments which will be automatically added in your report, voice annotations which is the easiest and fastest way to note important image information. You can do sketch. You can also view the image information which includes the date and time of your saved image and location where the image was taken. Occasionally, you will notice the live image freezes for a moment. A shutter sound can also be heard during this brief interruption and the word calibrating will appear at the top of the display. This is called non-uniformity correction or NUC. Thermal energy from the surrounding environment or that is generated inside the camera can affect the stability of the detector array inside. This can impact the integrity of the temperature data displayed on the image, causing areas within the field of view to appear artificially warmer or cooler. The NUC is a process that resets the detector, so all pixels return the same uniform thermal data, providing you with a better image that is more stable. You can do the NUC manually by covering the lens to have a uniform target, then hold the recall button here at the back of the camera for one second. The detector will then reset and the camera will return to live imaging mode. And last is the camera information that contains the information about the camera, part number, serial number, and more. Learn more about thermography with our wide collection of online courses. Visit www.infraredlearning.com. Call us or send an email for more information. See you on the next video.